The third um, unconventional programming paradigm he was visited, <laughs> visited by was machine learning. And uh, we're actually becoming quite common with this right now. Um, but in traditional programming, as we all know, you have an input, and you have an output, and you have a function. And the function is the bit that we code up. But machine learning changes this, right? We're letting the computer figure out this middle bit from it. We're turning over control to the machine. And it's a good thing, because with neural networks, there's a sort of universality uh, that it can approximate any function guaranteed, like the proof of universality for NAND gates. <laughs> and in fact, I really like this tweet. <laughs> so gradient descent, which is one of the optimizations for a uh, neural network, it can write better code than you. I, I, I'm sorry. And I think we're just going to have to deal more and more with this as programmers as we go along. So the thing about neural networks now is with deep learning, you can make stacks of them. And this is actually an architecture for something called the VGG16 architecture. Uh, different layers, now with GPUs, we can glue these all together, and they can do some pretty amazing things. Uh, they can do things like recognize images. You can tell the difference between cats and dogs with them. Or maybe you can do something a little bit more interesting like that, like, I don't know, drive cars. But the thing people don't um, talk about a lot is they can also create. And I find this really fascinating. Um, there's this wonderful site that I encourage you all to go to. It's called uh, Pix to Pix. And you can draw an outline of a cat. And you can press this process button. And using uh, these things called GANs, they have neural networks that will actually generate and fill in a cat for you in the edges that you draw. It's a wonderful and powerful technique. But with any powerful technique, it can be abused, as I have done here. So here is my cat. <laughs> and I'm not sure what that is, but it's a little scary. So <laughs> beware. But getting these architectures together of these deep learning ar architectures of these layers, convolutional, and max pooling, and ReLU, and all these things, it takes a lot of skill. It takes a lot of skill, a lot of time, and a lot of experiment experimentation. So, you know, in, in true fashion, you know, why don't we turn this over to the computer to do? And this is exactly what this uh, GitHub project is doing. This is called Deep Neural Network Evolution. And it takes these architectures for uh, deep learning, and it comes up with the best one by machine. So this particular one uses genetic programming. And the technique it will use is it'll say, OK, let's take 1,000 or 5,000 or 100,000 uh, population of possible network configurations and let them breed and let them mutate and let them evolve and see which one would actually yield the best result. And it's no surprise that some of the results have been better than humans have come up with or even imagined have come up with. And this is something that I see us relying more and more on as the times progress. Programs in effect, designing themselves.